Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to a special edition of A Current Affair. Tonight, in the wake of today's final guilty verdict against Hey Dad star Robert Hughes, we can now bring you the full story of how a predator was brought to justice, how the bravery of his victims and their supporters, along with our own investigation, ensured that truth would win out over lies and cover-up. Well, Robert Hughes is now a convicted sex offender. He did irreparable damage to a number of people's lives. He was one of Australia's biggest TV stars. His long-term de facto partner, one of Australia's biggest celebrity agents. Thank you, Robin Gardner. I but love for more than so 30 much. years, Robert Hughes had a secret. He was a sex predator preying on innocent young girls. It started when I was little like really little. I was asleep and he would walk in and put his hands under the covers. He had her up on a chair and he had his hands on her chest. I remember being absolutely repulsed. Four years ago fellow cast members, family I've friends, even his own relatives all came forward to a current affair as we uncovered the biggest sex scandal in Australian television history. You're aware of no wrongdoing at all on this show? And I'm not willing to talk about it. Then he said to me, you consider this a lesson in professionalism. I know I'm not the only one. It would lead to a two-year police investigation involving more than 200 witnesses, resulting in 11 child sex charges relating to five victims. Today, finally, a guilty verdict and justice for his victims. The reality is that this day probably would never have happened had it not been for mainstream media, particularly this program and also Woman's Day. Tonight, the full story about how the police and this program caught a predator. Let's go, you rolling? Yeah. Let's go. Everything's going really well here, everything's fine. Robert Hughes has been in show business most of his life. A musician turned actor, he had countless roles in theatre, film and TV. He never stops talking about Wandon Valley. Well, during the 1970s, Robert Hughes was a, what we call a jobbing actor. Oh, let's move, we're running out of time. He was out doing bits and pieces, and he was not a household name by any stretch of the imagination. I, I have to get an interview with Abba. But stardom was just around the corner. Abba the Movie was a feature film about the mania surrounding the supergroup in Australia. And there, playing the lead uh, role, Robert Hughes. Uh, excuse me, I'd just like to, uh, can I have a, uh, an interview? Sure. But for all the fame the film brought, it was an unlikely sitcom nearly a decade later that would make him a household name. Hey Dad was a corny comedy about a single father raising his three children. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. The first episode went to air in February 1987. It was an instant smash hit. Entertainment reporter Peter Ford. It wasn't me. Well, Hey Dad was the biggest TV show around at that time. I mean, it also was a breakthrough show. We haven't had a great track record of doing sitcoms in Australia. And whilst there probably was nothing especially sophisticated about the Hey Dad format or the scripts, it was still enormously successful. Forget it. The cast included Simone Buchanan, Christopher Truswell, Julie McGregor, Ben Oxenbold, and playing the role of little Jenny, Sarah Monaghan. Two, three. No, there's just one of me, Dad. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Jim. What viewers didn't know was that behind the scenes, Hey Dad's biggest star, Robert Hughes, was molesting Sarah, a truth that wouldn't be revealed for more than 20 years. It started off fairly innocent, the whole, you know, sit on my lap, you know, tickle, stuff like that, and then it got worse. It was March 2010 when Sarah first only... told her story to Woman's Day and then a current affair, Just detailing disturbing allegations of inappropriate behaviour by a fellow cast member. He would like touch my boobs um, and then because I was always on his lap, you know, he'd always like grab my ass or, you know, put his hand like right here, you know. Although Monaghan didn't name Hughes at the time, she described how he would expose himself to her backstage. I remember very specifically the one episode where I was behind the set and it was between the two shows and I'm there like, you know, little kid drawing and it was like full on down to the pants. Sarah told us it happened from when she was six years old until she turned 13. They say that people don't know, but people knew. 
and it was always a keep it hushed because this is the most successful TV show on television and people don't want to know that. Were you aware of anything inappropriate going on? I had heard um, something, but uh, um, I had no idea the extent of the monstering. In the days following that explosive first interview with Sarah, we tracked down other Hey Dad cast members. And I feel sorry for her that uh, there was no one that she could feel she could turn to. Julie um, McGregor and Christopher Truswell didn't remember seeing anything inappropriate on the set. Because she's so small and cute and everything, mm -hmm. as a kid, you know, everybody was always pulling her on, onto their lap. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's just, a, it was not something that would be, you wouldn't be looking for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, to see if any sort of impropriety was going on at all. But there was. As part of our investigation, a current affair obtained this chilling photograph taken by a crew member. It shows Sarah sitting on Robert Hughes' lap, his hands hidden under a script. I'm sure so many people agree that the look on his face and the look on your face just said so much. Yeah, he just looks so cocky, like, look at what I can do in a room full of people and I'm just sitting there going, really, again? I've always wondered whether this would ever happen. You know, this has been something we've kept to ourselves for 20 years. Simone Buchanan, who played Sarah's on-screen older Everybody sister, knows. would soon speak out, revealing that Sarah had confided in her at the time when the abuse was happening. She came to me and she said, you know, Robert's, Robert's behaving funny. And uh, that's what you mean. She said, he's, he's, he started to touch me uh, you know, inappropriately, and, and I said, oh, OK. Um, and I had an idea about the man at the stage, so there was no reason for me not to believe her. Gary. Yeah. G'day. Brady Holtz from Current Affair. How are you? Gary Riley was the creator and executive producer of Hey Dad. Reporter Brady Halls went looking for answers about what he and Channel 7 management knew. Were you, were you aware of those allegations, though? Well, I'm not aware of any allegations. None? I, I have no idea what you're talking you're about. You're aware of no wrongdoing at all on this show? And I'm not willing to talk about it at the moment. Thank Does you. that mean you were aware or you weren't aware? The next day, he agreed to speak with Tracy Grimshaw. How much did you know at the time? Nothing. None of us knew anything. The, uh, the first thing I understood about Sarah was the magazine article and your program. During this extraordinary interview, Riley maintained that he that didn't no know about Sarah's allegations about his lead star. Nothing. Then he said and this. And the reality was that I, I, I've got to choose my words carefully, approached the person on several occasions and we had stand-up rows about it. A stand-up blues to the extent that he resigned. Gary Riley's denials infuriated cast member Ben Oxenbold. There's the guile to come on national television and say that he knew nothing about it. I don't believe it. I approached him and expressed my concerns, told him what I knew, and I was essentially not just shot down in flames, but intimidated into not saying anything and then he said to me you consider this a lesson in professionalism here at a current affair our phones started ringing former tv executives people who were once family friends of robert hughes even some of his own family they all wanted to tell us the same story robert hughes was a sexual predator he was a um, family friend and so was around our house quite a lot. These two brave sisters came forward to tell their story about what Hughes did to them. At the time, one was 10, the other just six. I was asleep and he would walk in and put his hands under the covers. I woke up myself one time um, and his hands were under the doona. Other victims came forward and went directly to police as a result of our investigation. The question everyone was then asking, where was Robert Hughes? Singapore is where Robert Hughes moved with his long-term de facto Robin Gardner. Her talent agency, RGM Management, had taken off and in 2010 was expanding into Asia. 
Robin Gardner would certainly be considered one of, if not the top manager for actors in Australia. By now, she was representing a galaxy of Australian stars. Hugh Sheridan, Vince Colosimo, Chris Lilly and Lisa McCune. But her biggest name was Oscar winner Kate Blanchett. Um, my agent in Australia, Robin Gardner, I love you so very much. Some people were surprised that Kate mentioned Robin Gardner by name at the Oscars, given all that was going on. Singapore is a city of five million people. Let's go, you rolling? Yep. Let's go. We went there wanting to find just one. Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. Tonight, an explosive edition of the program as we name the man who's allegedly... Robert Hughes. Robert Hughes. Hello, Robert. Ben McCormack from A Current Affair. There's a lot of serious allegations being made about you back in Australia at the moment. Do you have anything to say? I, I'm absolutely, totally shocked at the allegations and I deny absolutely deny everything. A Current so Affair was the first media organisation to name Robert Hughes as a sex predator and we were the only ones to secure this interview. Everything now is in the hands of defamation lawyers. The defamation lawsuits he threatened never came but what did was a police investigation. The man is Robert Hughes, the lead character On the same and night we named AA. Robert Hughes the New South Wales sex crime squad set up Strike Force Ruskin. It was a, a lot of work for the police. It was a long investigation. It spanned more than two years. Officers had to travel overseas to speak with victims. And also, they've had to convince some people to be prepared to come to court. Among the hundreds of witnesses interviewed, Naomi Watts and Delta Goodrum, both who appeared on Hey Dad as youngsters. Neither made claims against Hughes, but by June 2012, police and the DPP were ready. An arrest warrant was issued, and in August, they made their move. We begin with the major development in the Hey Dad scandal and the arrest of its former star. Hughes had moved from Singapore to London. That's where he was arrested. Strike Force Ruskin detectives escorted him back to Australia to await his trial. It would take six weeks every day, Robert Hughes coming to court to face his accusers, adult women who he knew as young girls. His horrific past was finally catching up with him. The prosecution presented five victims. The first was 14 years old when on two separate occasions she claimed that Hughes sexually assaulted her when she was asleep in her bedroom. The second victim was between six and eight when she claimed she was indecently assaulted by Hughes on four separate occasions during sleepovers at his house. Victim three, well she was just nine when she said she was indecently assaulted by Hughes twice on a trip to the beach and another when he was putting drops in her ear. Victim four was 15 and claimed Hughes indecently assaulted her once when she went to him for acting advice. And victim five, well, that was Sarah Monaghan, who claimed Hughes exposed himself to her on the set of Hey Dad when she was just a little girl. In my opinion, the strength of the Robert Hughes case came in the fact that all of these women had no connection to each other, didn't cross paths as children, certainly have not crossed paths as adults, who all have come forward with accusations of indecent assault or of indecency by Robert Hughes. During the trial, Robert Hughes took the stand in his own defence and, as he's always done, denied any wrongdoing. Court reporter Amy Dale covered the trial for Sydney's Daily Telegraph newspaper. At times Robert Hughes did become very agitated in the stand. There were times that he got very tense and appeared to be very annoyed uh, by what was taking place. The only women to stand by him in court were his long-term partner Robin Gardner and his daughter Jessica. Now Robin Gardner hadn't been at court really at all for the entire trial but she came to give evidence and obviously she was very measured and very controlled in her answers to say that her husband had no case to answer and had done nothing wrong and that was uh, they were claims that were mirrored almost in some cases word for word by Jessica Hughes. 
In the end, the jury of six men and six women found Robert Hughes guilty of 10 of the 11 charges, including Sarah Monaghan's. Throughout the trial, he'd shown little emotion. But right at the end, when the verdicts were being read out, he started to cry and he yelled out to the jury, I am innocent. He's shown no remorse and taken no responsibility for his horrendous crimes. But tonight, he's behind bars awaiting sentencing. This day probably would never have happened had it not been for mainstream media, particularly this program and also Woman's Day, because they aired these allegations. And you were taking on a sacred cow. You were taking on things that were very disturbing to hear. But it has resulted in this verdict today, and that's got to be a good thing. Now, people will know that just because someone has profile in the community or is famous doesn't mean they've got the right to behave like that ever. Karen Willis from the Rape Crisis Centre hopes that the courageous women who came forward in this case will inspire other victims of sexual abuse to do the same. This will feel to them like they've been believed, they've been vindicated and now they can get on with the rest of their lives. And congratulations to them all. For now, the legal process is over. Really. Sarah Monaghan, um, I mean, the woman who started all of this four years ago, says she's still considering suing Channel 7 over what happened to her. Somebody must have known, other people must have known about these allegations who were directly involved with the show, whether it was the network or the production company. So I wonder if they today, how they feel, if they really think they did enough at the time or whether they dismissed it because it was all a nuisance and the show was riding high and they didn't want any sort of disruption to that. Peter Ford says child stars of today are much better protected than they were all those years ago. If there's a positive to come out of this for the entertainment industry, it is that in 2014, what happened back in the days of Hey Dad simply couldn't happen today. There are too many things in place to prevent that from happening, and that's a good thing. How should these women feel about this verdict today? They should be incredibly proud of themselves. They've overcome the fear and the trauma they've experienced. They've overcome community attitudes. They've worked their way through a very difficult criminal justice system. And now they've been, they've had their offender found guilty. Good on them. And they should go on to lead the most marvellous and wonderful of lives. And reporter Ben McCormack has been pivotal in our investigation from the beginning. He joins me now in the studio. Ben, this has been a very complex case, but the jury was methodical in its approach, wasn't it? They, they, they sure were, Tracy. Uh, sitting there in court, it was obvious that they went through each one of these charges one at a time, individually and on their own merits. Now, the jury went out... Thursday lunchtime, we didn't hear anything from them. Come Friday morning, though, they were asking for transcripts relating to all the witnesses relating to victim number three. As Friday went on, they were asking for all the transcripts relating to victim number, th number four. So we were thinking they're going through these one at a time. Come Monday, yesterday, late morning, they asked for all the transcripts relating to victim number five, which was, of course, Sarah Monaghan. And I thought it was telling that when the jury came back yesterday afternoon and said to the judge, look, we've convicted him on these nine counts, but we're unsure of the last two. I think that really said that the jury didn't just sit back and go, well, he's guilty of these, therefore he's guilty of all of them. They really were diligent in the job that they had to do. Now, we've named Sarah Monaghan, and she, as a victim of sexual assault, of sexual abuse, is entitled to anonymity, and she was referred throughout this trial as the Hey Dad, hey Dad cast member, but she has consented to give up her anonymity, hasn't she? That's right, she has, and, and, and in fact, we were remaining in very very close contact with Sarah as the jury was deliberating and uh, I sent her a message when that first guilty verdict came through and her reaction was extraordinary. She screamed, she burst into tears, she was elated and who can blame her? This has been a long time coming for Sarah. Remember it was four years ago since she came forward to our program to tell her story and it was interesting at the time talking to some other victims. You know what they said to us at the time? They said, you know what? We feel we've been able to come forward and tell our story because Sarah came forward to tell her story. And tonight, you know, Sarah is the hero in all this. This all happened because of her. And I think not only Sarah, but all those brave, wonderful women who came forward to tell their story, to face the criminal justice system and to see justice done today, I hope they're celebrating because they should be very proud of what they've done. All right, thanks, Ben. Next step is sentencing, and that will happen on May the 2nd, and we will wait to see what happens with that. Indeed. Thanks, Tracy.